everyone, my name is Miss Jessica and I'm from Vintage Downtown. And I'm in my home, just like all of you are, but I'm really missing being in church and seeing all of your faces, so I thought I would join you today. So we've been learning about the Sermon on the Mount the last few weeks and we learned uh, from Jesus how we should live in this upside down kingdom. But don't you kind of wonder like, what does that look like? What does that look like for us? Well, that's what we're going to be learning about today and over the next few weeks. So we're gonna be looking at a man named Daniel. And Daniel was exiled in Babylon. So can you say exiled? Say exiled. So that seems like a really bit confusing word, but all it means is that uh, it's a person that has been forced to leave their home, their country, um, their safe place, Exiled means they've been forced out, forced away. So imagine what that must be like. Imagine being forced to leave your home, the place where you feel comfortable, the place where you have all your favorite food, all of your family, all of your friends. Wouldn't that be really scary to be forced away from everything that you know? Wow, I think that would be kind of scary. Do you think you would be sad? I think so. I think I would be sad. So today, before we learn about Daniel and his friends, we're going to learn what God tells us about being in exile. So just like Jesus taught us to live in his kingdom in the Sermon on the Mount, we are continually learning what kingdom living means and what it looks like. So God talked to his people about what it would look like to live in exile or to respond to being moved from a place that's comfortable. So I know sometimes when we have to change our routine or anything new changes, we might enter that kind of kicking and screaming and not wanting to do it because it's so different and uncomfortable. But Jesus is gonna tell us how we as Christians and followers of Jesus should respond in these times. So today we're going to learn about this through a prophet named Jeremiah. So can you say Jeremiah? Jeremiah is a book of the Bible in the Old Testament. So in the very front of your Bible, you can find Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, um, we're going to, God used Jeremiah to talk to his people about what would happen to them and even about how they should respond. So how they should react with the things that were happening to them. And even though that seems like it was a long, long time ago, it's still relevant to what's happening now and how we should respond in the world today. So let's open up our Bibles. We're going to go to the front half of the Bible. We're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 4 through 9. I'll give you a minute. You can pause the video to find the verse in your Bible. So Jeremiah 29 verses 4 through 9. And this is what it says. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons, and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, have children. But seek the welfare of the city, where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for it is in its welfare you will find your welfare. So you can pause this video, you can read the passage again, so that we can think about all these questions that I'm going to have. So what did you notice about the passage? Does anything come to mind? Did you notice that maybe God tells them that they're going to be sent into exile, but tells his people what they should do? Does he say they should pout and cry? No, he didn't say that. Does he say they should change everything about the new city and make it just like home? No, he didn't say that either. Does he say they should run and hide? No, he doesn't say that either. 
So let's look at what he does say, since he didn't say any of those things. He says, build houses. So make a new home in this place that's uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Plant gardens. Have any of you guys planted gardens this summer with your moms and dads and planted flowers and maybe vegetables? That's something that God calls us to do. He said, what else does he say? Does anybody remember? He says, have a family, because some of the people moved into exile maybe didn't have a family anymore. Maybe their family didn't leave. So he's saying, let's have a, have a family. That's a good thing. He said, seek the welfare of the city. So welfare means seek the goodness. You want the city to thrive. You want the city to do good. You don't want the city to um, be a bad city or a poor city. You want it to be a good, thriving, flourishing city. So that means make sure the city does well and takes care, take care of the city. So it can seem like a bad thing to be in exile. It can seem scary because you've lost everything that you know. But uh, you're in a land where it feels like nothing fits, like nothing is like you've always known. And this is how life sometimes feels as a Christian because everything in life isn't the way that it was supposed to be sometimes. But that just proves that God is in this moment and that we are meant for things outside of this world. So it means that we're meant for heaven and that this isn't going to be our final home. And we're not made to just live on earth and die, right? Are we made for heaven? Are we made to be in union with God? Yeah. So we're living in a kingdom that's not our own, but God is really clear about how we should act. We're not supposed to run and hide, right? We settle in and we live and we take care of our city. Do you guys like to take care of the city? Can you think of things that you might do with your family that takes care of the city? Yeah. And what do you think God says? Why do you think God says that? He tells us in Jeremiah, in his happiness, you will find your happiness. So when we take care of the city, we find care. We also show our city the love of Jesus. So let's, you can pause this video, you can rewatch it, you can reread the passage, and think of ways that you can show Jesus' love in all of those um, moments in your city. You can draw a picture of maybe something you want to do to show Jesus' love to other people. Um, you can write about it. You can talk to your mom and dad or your brothers and sisters or your grandparents about it. Um, but think about what kind of leader they see Jesus being in this passage. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you guys can get outside and play and have fun. Um, and we can't wait to see you. We can't wait to all be together again. Thanks. Bye.